Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Fiber OWL and Micro OWL series optical power meters implement a flexible naming system that makes customer test reports meaningful and easy to understand. This video will explain how data is stored in Fiber OWL and Micro OWL series optical power meters, as well as give tips on naming fiber test reports in a meaningful way. There are three key components to the format of Fiber OWL and Micro OWL test results. Stored link, fiber label, and fiber ID. For the purpose of understanding, the word link simply refers to a group of fibers that have identical characteristics, including fiber standard, fiber type, fiber length, number of connections, and number of splices, and generally follow the same fiber path from point A to point B. A link could have any number of fibers, so long as they all have identical characteristics. Stored link parameters are entered into the certification power meter during the setup process, which is called the link wizard in the fiber all and micro all optical power meters. Fiber all and micro all power meters can store up to eight different stored link configurations, all of which can be renamed by the user to separate fiber jobs and make test reports more meaningful. As you can see, I scrolled through the different, uh, different uh, stored link options there. Uh, you'll see that the the names fiber link 1 through 8 are the default values and these are the names that you can change to make your test reports more meaningful. Now if any of these characteristics change when going to test a new set of fibers uh, you will need to set up a new link configuration. If testing a group of identical fibers between an equipment room and the main cabling closet a possible stored link name could be ER-MCC and what I'll do here is I'll, I'll set up the meter uh, just to demonstrate here. So I will select fiber link number one and I will go back and put the new link name in. So we'll call it E R and an MCC. The next two parts of fiber naming occur when storing test results in the optical power meter. Okay, here we see a typical screen when we're taking a reading. Uh, a typical fiber, ma fiber name might look like this. Like you see on the screen here, it says FBR colon 1. Uh, this name consists of two different parts, the fiber label and the fiber ID. The fiber label is a prefix that further describes the fiber being tested, and the fiber ID is the port number or fiber number. So in this case, the, uh, the fiber label is FBR colon, and the fiber ID is 1. Now, the default fiber label is FBR colon. Normally, if there is only one patch panel being tested with the currently loaded stored link, there is no need to change this prefix. However, if there are multiple patch panels or cables, and they all have the same fiber characteristics, the fiber label can be changed accordingly. Using different fiber labels will also keep related test results conveniently grouped together. Now, an important note to make is that it is highly recommended to use a special character to separate the label from the ID, as we see here, we use the colon. Um, and this is especially true when the label ends in a number. Uh, this prevents FBR1 colon 1 from looking like FBR11. Okay, here are a couple of helpful examples to kind of explain the different ways that this fiber uh, labeling system can be used. Uh, the first example, let's say that there are two identical 24 fiber cables that are installed between the equipment room and the main cabling closet. In other words, the ER-MCC stored link that we've already defined. And each of these 24 fiber cables are installed into a separate patch panel. So we do want to make sure that they're, they're all named appropriately so we know which patch panel and which port were tested. Uh, a different fiber label can be used for each patch panel. For example, patch panel 1 colon and patch panel 2 colon. And I will demonstrate that here. You can rename the fibers when you're taking the, when you're actually storing the reading. So when you store the reading, 
you'll see an option called rename here above F2. So hit F2 and you can backspace and put the name or the label in. So we're going to put in panel one colon first. Okay, and if we want to put lower lace, lowercase characters, press the shift key. If we want to put a space in, we simply press F3, type the number one, and then we put a colon in. To, de to separate the two characters, or the, or, uh, I'm sorry, separate the fiber label from the fiber ID. We press done when we're finished entering the, ID, or the label, and as you can see, it says panel one colon one here. When we're ready to uh, store this reading, we simply press save. Now, as you can see, it says panel one colon two here. You simply store the readings. Okay. I'm just going to speed this process up a little bit here until I get to 24. So you can see that we have stored up to 24 readings, and now we are prompted to hook into port number 25. Obviously, we do not have a port number 25, but we do have a uh, the first port on patch panel number 2. So when we store this reading, we hit store, but then we rename. We just backspace a little bit and then put 2. One, hit done, and as you can see, we we start back at port number one. We save, and then we go on storing data until we get to fiber port number twenty-four. And I'll speed that process up again here, and finally store a reading number twenty-four. Okay, that was one example. Uh, another example could be if um, if there is only one 24 fiber cable that's installed between the equipment room and the main cabling closet, except the customer wants to use uh, or wants to test the link in both directions. The fiber label can also be used to denote direction, and I, I will demonstrate um, a good way of doing this as well. So what we'll do is we'll just pretend that we're uh, storing a whole new set of readings. Let's store. And then we'll rename. And what we can do is, let's say the first direction is uh, from the, oh, let's hit the shift key here. Let's go from the equipment room. Okay. And then we will make a little arrow here. And then we'll put M C C and then we'll just put another colon here. Okay, what this means is that we're testing from the in the direction of equipment room to the main cabling closet. We hit done and we hit save. And again, we'll just pretend that there's a few fibers here. Um, and, and you get the idea, you store up to 24 readings, but now let's say you are done test, uh, testing in this direction and you want to test in the other direction. Simply press store. When you get to the first port, you rename, backspace all the way over here, you put M, C, C, and then we put our little uh, our little arrow here. Okay, and then we put ER at the end. And then again, put a colon at the end. Okay, now we're testing in the direction of the main cabling closet to the equipment room. And again, just pretend that you're storing readings and you go all the way up to uh, fiber number 24. This has been another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. For more information about additional instructional videos, 
or OWL fiber optic test equipment in general, please visit OWL's website at owl-inc.com. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.